YouTube. I am at 2F today with Paco. What's up? How's it going? Hello. Uh, so you all already know him from Maximum Drift Cast and everything. I just thought it'd be cool. We're starting off Drift Week right now, rolling through town, heading over to California to start the whole thing. We were just at Muscleman Honda today, uh, saying hi to Charlie over there and getting like everything situated. We're trailering in tires. We're trailering, trailering everything into the event, and everybody's about to meet up. So I thought it'd be really cool to stop off, check out the shop and everything, and. Um, I kind of always have a theme of like what we're going to talk about, and I'm sure we'll stray off of it really quickly. But the theme of this conversation is originally in drifting, when we all got into it, everything was Japanese based. The cars were Japanese based, all the body kits were Japanese based, all the styling was Japanese. Um, all the culture behind it. Yeah, and yeah. if you went and drove a Mustang like JR, everybody hated it for a while. And it took a while for like people like JR to create an American version of drifting. Um, for people to get confident to build kits here in America, uh, for them to be confident and drive American chassis, to drive V8s, and even to this day you see a lot of people, oh, that sucks, that's American, that's this LS or that. swaps suck, everything. Yeah, American and you might even sucks. see that from like the Final Bout type crowd where you're an American product or something and you know, they don't necessarily like it. So you still see that cultural bias towards Japanese stuff in this. Yeah. So anyways, the whole point of this is just like, what do you think about that being one of the first American body kit manufacturers that was introducing you know, your own style and your own thought process in it, which I don't want to fill in your words because I'm going to let you completely <laughs> talk in a second. But um, from my perspective is, is 2F was built specifically to make Formula D cars look low, to like cheat the low because the cars had to be high. And that really probably informed a lot of the look of your kits because you can't slam a 2F car to the ground because your body kit would literally be below ground. So this is kind of in my brain for competition cars with a lot of power and a lot of tire, not cars on 215s because they would get swallowed underneath the kit. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the whole thing. So that's my take. You tell me what you think about all those ideas. Huge shout out to all the sponsors of Drift Week, starting with BC Racing Custom Coilovers, who support more grassroots and professional drifters than any other coilover company. Thank you to WhatMonstersDo.com for supporting all of our content for so long, including our Japanese content. Use the discount code EBISU on their website for a discount. Thank you to NK Wheels. They make so much cool stuff, all the way from my drift wheels all the way up to F1 wheels. Thank you to ECU Master for supporting grassroots guys all the way up to the best driver in the world, James Dean. Thank you to Yplay Imports. If you need a rad right-hand drive car from Japan, hit up Trenton at Yplay Imports and get them before the prices get too high and thank you to drift hq for bringing in that support vehicle and congratulations on everything that you've been doing this year drift hq you are killing it well um first of all i mean welcome to f hi and welcome to our casting couch <laughs> um but yeah i mean you're right i mean i think um you know like i when i first started drifting i had a c5 corvette mm -hmm. and nobody liked me everybody yep. was like get that car out of here you know they're not those are not drift cars and you know now they're everywhere, right? Corvettes, five, uh, C5, C6s, Mustangs. And in my opinion, like, you know, like the, there's, uh, the Japanese style is just unbeatable. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a total weave, you know, I, <laughs> I love anime. I, you know, everything that comes from Japan, I, I love it. And I always liked the style, even though I'm not like a, like a diehard fan of, you know, if, if it's not Japanese, I don't hate it either. Mm -hmm. So. I always thought that uh, drifting being basically, you know, like a staple of Japan, it's like a, it's an expression of the driver and the, the, the style and all that, it requires the car to look good. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, it's always been like the case where there's cars that can drift amazing and the driver is doing a great job, but the car is all beat and it's missing body panels and it just doesn't look that great. Mm -hmm. But when a car has like nice painting, nice livery, nice wheels, nice body kit, everything that the car does looks better. It's like an enhancement, you mm -hmm. know? So I think that's what was missing on American cars. Like literally, they just look boring, you know? They look... You mean American cars is in like USDM built cars, like Mustangs and American stuff? American cars... Or you just mean all drifters in America American sucked? cars drifting, okay. mostly. Like the, yeah. the kind of cars that you get on... on, on especially, for example, like you say, uh, the Fox Body Mustang. Um, I think JR was, was, was one of the first ones who started drifting uh, Fox Body on, on small events and then the SN95 mm -hmm. on Formula Drift. They just look big, bulky, you know, like, like a car ready to drag race. They don't look stylish, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we had a charger at some point. We know we uh, have yes, this beast. You I know? was in a commercial with that thing, and <laughs> oh, like, shit. it was so big and like <laughs> kind of gross looking. It's another game day down south with the BF Goodrich Tires Road Crew. I'm AJ. I'm Steven. We're just outside Baton Rouge checking out what the locals do when they're not watching football. The emerging sport of drifting is all about car control, and venues like this give drivers a chance to hone their skills. Today, AJ's getting a chance to drift with Formula D champion Samuel Hubinet. So do you have any advice for beginners? Sure, practice. Make sure you get your car as light as possible and use the best tires out there. To drift well, you need a lot of control. I won a championship on the Beef British Kitty W, so I'm sure you know what I would recommend. I mean, it was gross looking. I don't have to like defend anybody's feelings. Yeah. It was, oh, it was awful. Like, yeah, yeah, and you know what I mean? Like, if there was something done to that car, I bet it can be, it can may, be made to look better. Nothing can save a Charger. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll take your word. I'm not, I'm not doing anything <laughs> with that car at the, at the point, but I do believe that every car has a redeemable mm -hmm. uh, point. And um, the, the whole idea of, of 2F actually started with a Corvette, like the first bumper we ever made was a C5 Corvette bumper made to look more like a C6, mm -hmm. but not, not like, a, like it's trying to be a C6. It's just a GM looking product basically, but on a C5. And it was a, it was a good success um, for a while and eventually we started moving into drifting. And that's where uh, my partner, Chris Soren, he was already working with Forrest Wang on making a kit that, like you said, like it can be, it can look low mm -hmm. without actually having to crank all your suspension down, because then you lose all the squatting and then you lose your traction, you know. So Forrest, in his uh, professional mind, you know, he wanted to keep the the functionality of a good suspension setup, but also have the look mm -hmm. and the flair of of a traditional Japanese drifting. So. He came up with the idea of making the kits lower and, you know, like adding, adding like an extra material on the bottom. And we came up with the idea of flaring it outside uh, the, the conventional width and making the, the side skirt on the body and the front bumper wrap around the tires more, which basically at that point, uh, cars already started like coming up with like way wider front width, uh, the wider track. Because of Wise Fab and because stuff. Wise, I think Wise Fab wasn't a thing yet, but but just the, the the in order to get like more angled, you know, you extend the lower control arms and just start getting wider stance, and then Wise Fab came up and you know like 88 millimeter <laughs> front fenders, you know, it's just like where where are we stopping, right? So because of that, we thought like, well, what's missing is, is like the cars, the, the the existing body kits, they already have a particular style, but they're still not fitting what a more professional drifter wants, mm -hmm. where it's like, like we said, you know, like not being completely slammed to be able to have more mechanical traction and all that. So uh, Forrest came up with this idea, we refined it, and we came up with, a, with our, our, our series of uh, Super Doof kits, mm -hmm. which I mean, the, the whole Super Doof name is Old Forrest. He, <laughs> he's the one that saw it as like, dude, like it's the Doof, man, it's just wide. And this what is does Doof cool. mean? It's like, a, like, like it was an expression that he says, like, doof, man, it's like so <laughs> wide, you know? So it, that's all Forrest. Mm -hmm. uh, Forrest and uh, Garrett, they're the ones who, who basically, uh, the, the, they were the brains behind the idea mm -hmm. of Super Doof. Eventually, you know, we, we came up with more, uh, more Super Doof for basically all S chassis. And eventually we made it for the BMW E46, which also very popular. Uh, drift chassis and same like every E46 that's ever been on Formula Drift, it basically had an M3 front bumper mm -hmm. and that's it, you know, like there's no really, no style, I mean, no, nothing particular, right? But now, uh, you know, we have uh, Mike Diaz and um, uh, I lost, lost the name r real quick. Nick, Nick Novak, so. Oh yeah, yeah, so yeah. So Nick's have, my boy, so yeah. There you go. So. You don't have to feel bad about that, <laughs> hi Nick. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm terrible with names yeah, all the you're time. Fine. So having to remember everybody's names. But so yeah, Nick Novak uh, and Mike Diaz, they're like the first uh, guys on Formula Drift with our 
E46 body kit. And you know, they're both like big wheels, big style, big wing, you know, like, it's, I, we, I personally think it's been a success. Mm -hmm. um, so now, you know, we're moving into back, like trying to make a circle back into the Corvette. Everybody knows that C6s are great drift cars. Um, you guys had a few C4s at Drift Week. Mm -hmm. That, you know, that's hot. That's a hot drift car right there. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, like we, we know that more people are actually looking into, into these American cars again. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to bring the support of parts, uh, not, not only our Super Duve body kits, but also like our, uh, what we call the LFC rear panels, mm -hmm. which basically just replace the entire rear of your car, you know, just smash it against the wall. You don't have to replace the chassis, you just put our fiberglass panels. Next time you smash your car against the wall, instead of bouncing, uh, bouncing and messing up your front, you know, just crush some fiberglass, keep drifting. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to support every car that everybody's driving, and that's basically our mission. So to kind of like go back to the narrative of this, of this conversation a little bit, when I think about Super Doof, in my brain I think about cheater low on a Formula D type car, like say your rear clamshell design, mm -hmm. that's specifically meant for like a super competition car. Yeah. You're cutting the back of a car off, Tubing it becomes it. disposable. Yeah. All these things are very different than the Japanese mindset. Most Japanese kits, other than like BN, all were 20, 30 mil wide body type kits. Mm -hmm. um, they were all meant to have pretty skinny tires on them. They were all meant to be, yeah. um, the car had to be very low to make the kit low, mm -hmm. especially if you remember like the old M Sport bumpers and stuff like mm -hmm. that. You had to slam the car to make those yeah. cars look low. And you also had to have skinny tires and stuff. Like you had to make mechanically the car low in both tire and yeah. suspension. But they um, also had like 16 inch wheels and very narrow <laughs> tires. You yeah. Know? Like that's, that's the thing that today, you know, style is like 17, 18, mm -hmm. you know, big John is like they say, yeah. very wide lips which is very different from what they have then. Yeah. So how do you adapt that big of a wheel and tire to the same old school car, right? Right, well what I was gonna say is, as we've then come to Formula D time, and D1 is now more of a drag race than even Formula D probably, mm -hmm. and the cars in, I don't know if this is true, but probably the cars in D1 are faster than Formula D cars because they don't have the same tire rules. I think their tires are even stickier, mm -hmm. um, and they have some really fast cars. Yeah. I don't know if that's specifically true, because you know we don't drive them against each other and all yeah. this stuff. But anyways, <laughs> um, the, the D1 cars and all the Japanese cars are now getting very high now too, if you notice. Like yeah. Suenaga's S15 is crazy high, mm -hmm. and it does not run a cheater stance. The Japanese cars have actually, in competition mode, come up in ride height significantly, mm -hmm. and they don't do a cheater low. Yeah. So now, it's almost like the Americans are trying to low ride their, you know, like Formula mm -hmm. D cars. Not everybody, but you know, the 2F crew. Yeah. Um, which is significantly different than a lot of the Japanese guys. Yeah. So like the style goes back and forth where I almost feel like the Japanese guys and their full-blown competition cars are copying the early Formula D stuff when it started to get very high uh, yeah. somewhere around like the 2000 time or 10 time frame. I'm not sure if that's true. So you see that like the, the they, they go back and forth really yeah, weird in trade so, styles. You know, J Japan started it, Japan set the benchmark, then Americans came over and you know, like they came up with like big crazy horsepower, right? And, and No, the Japanese cars. did. And the, well, Daigo I mean, was, came over and did yeah, that to us. But he did it here. Yeah, he did it here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so, <laughs> and, and then, you know, um, the rest of Americans came back to that level mm -hmm. and then uh, it, it's like, it's like uh, American drifting started surpassing Mm -hmm. As, at least in competition, you know, mm -hmm. like not the streets. Yeah, we have crazy budgets different. and stuff. It's yeah. insane to see crazy America budgets, transform exactly. stuff. And then Japan now started like go this way, mm -hmm. you know. And now, like you know, like I, I don't know if you remember. Uh, at some point, Formula Drift actually scored speed. Mm -hmm. So the higher the speed, you get a better score. Yeah, that was when Daigo was here. <laughs> exactly. So like, how do you get that all that speed? You know, you get a lot of power, a lot of traction, and you beat everybody. You mm -hmm. smoke him off the line. So. It's like now J J Japan cars are getting super, super fast, but they're still on DOS, mm -hmm. you know, and they're still like, like uh, measured differently. Mm -hmm. But now Formula Drift has more restrictions. Even ProSpec is getting even a lot more restrictions to make the cars more affordable and more limited, right? So 
I think it, it's just a wave, and they're kind of like like seeing, you know, like w it's not like one's better than the other. It's just that one sees what works for one and what can they take to work for them, mm -hmm. and then the other way around, mm -hmm. right? And at the end of the day, like uh, what what I, I per personally what I see is that a lot of the street guys copy some of the things that they see on, on professional drifting and adapt it to their to their own style. You know, like like Wisefab at some point it was exclusively for for professional drifting. Mm -hmm. And now you see a lot of people uh, actually putting Wisefab on their street car. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they necessarily if they need it or it's just more like for street cred or whatever, but like tendencies and trends, you know, like go back and forth and you know like it Japan you know, they're adopting bigger wheels now too, you know, mm -hmm. like um, wheels that you would consider were completely against the style of what originally initiated in drifting. And now you're starting to see more interest on American cars in Japan and more Eastern, more interest in LS engines, for example. There's quite an influx of, like, you know, the, the same way we bring Japanese cars here, there's a lot of LS engines going over there. Because they're better than Japanese engines. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I, I love him, Bob, but yeah. I, you know, I don't, I don't. I, As he I, puts a two Jay-Z in, in his Corvette. In Corvette. Um, but, but yeah, you know, like it's, it's just, in, in my opinion, it's just about being different and expressing yourself, you know, mm -hmm. like, I like when it comes to drifting, I always made the comparison that drifting is basically motorsport ballet, mm -hmm. you know, like it's an expression of yourself and it's qualified with judges. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, judged by judges, you know, so. It's all about how you express your your driving and your style, and even on competition, it's not just about battling each other. It's kind of like, but who look better battling? You know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because, like, one of the things I always say, like, you know, like uh, Mad Mike, he never really won a round, never really won a championship in Formula Drift. But he won the hearts and minds exactly. of everybody. And and it's excitement. amazing battles. I think some of the most intense battles I've seen in Formula Drift. Forrest Wang versus Mad Mike, mm -hmm. and that's what we love seeing, right? As 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 an audience. Yeah. So I mean, that's what captured all of our hearts and minds with early like 2003 D1 stuff. If, I'm sure you probably got into it sometime around yeah. then. It was the stylish cars got our attention. Like missile cars would not have done it in the same way. Yeah. You have to have pretty cars, I think, to get really people really excited. It's just that. Stylish cars can be very expensive for the average person to operate, mm -hmm. and they can be self-destructive to those same people when they try and like build D1 cars or Formula D cars and operate them. Yeah. I think we both see that all the time with oh, yeah. like guys driving I mean, crazy, insane cars. People who put like three, four thousand dollar set of wheels on their drift car, and then they drop a wheel at uh, you know at one of your events mm -hmm. in these very remote tracks, mm -hmm. or not not you know like there's immediate wheel damage. Mm -hmm. And you know everybody cheers for you and like oh, that's awesome. He's driving and this. And then you go home and cry. And you're like a fifteen hundred dollar wheel. Mm -hmm. But you know like there's there's like a like a silver lining you know between the like being the hero right like the the hero status that it seems to be always attached to drifting you know like who can do something who who, uh, who can dare to it's do a show what off everybody sport. else exactly. I always said it's fifty percent popularity contest. So, what is the next, like, say, five years for your company going to do? You've already made cheater low competition stuff. <laughs> you've done a lot of different chassis now that you've come out with parts. Yeah. You've kind of redefined because nobody was doing those rear clamshell designs that I can really think of. They would do over fenders, but they wouldn't do a whole replaceable whole rear re end, replacement. which you've really done. And that's kind of something you brought to market that I really can't think of too many people have done. No. Um, are you going to do something crazy like a whole NASCAR, you know, like pull off front clip or something like that, where someone could have a competition like drift car, like a 240SX, mm. and the, the bumper, the fenders, the hood are all molded into one piece and you just pull them off? That would be cool. Like, what can you do as a company to push the sport forward and drastically change it where people will be chasing you for the next, you know, five years with re copy parts? Yeah. Because well, the parts are so good, they're going to copy them. Anyways, go ahead. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> no, so, I mean, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I think um, you, you make a good point, and I think um, we, we are the kind of company who are not after becoming millionaires. We're mm -hmm. more after bringing a product that people want. Mm -hmm. I feel, I mean, as I like to consider myself part of the drifting community, one of the things we all like and enjoy about drift cars is that they're still a street car, mm -hmm. and they're still 
uh, look and behave and, and they can pass as a street, as another street car, you can drive them on the street, you know, they can uh, get them uh, tagged and licensed. And, and I, I would be very against making like a complete clamshell style mm -hmm. of, of, because the nature of the sport, it's, uh, there's a lot of contact. So it's a lot easier to replace individual parts than to replace an entire clamshell because you, you hit one fender, right? Mm -hmm. So because of that reason and also the fact that um, people like to mix and match and, and, and that's part of the expression, you know, like I really like the origin fenders, but I like the D-Max hood mm -hmm. and I like the 2F uh, Super Doof body kit, but I, like, I we have a lot of people who actually buy only front and side skirts and they use a different rear bumper. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that mix and match aspect, it's, it's very uh, unique of this uh, motorsport, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, like we have people putting pop-up headlights on S14s. Or, 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 you know, like we even make like a conversion uh, LFC panel where you can put actually S15 taillights on mm -hmm. an S14. And, and it's not only because of, of the aesthetics, because people want to convert their S14 into S15, it's also cheaper because the, ta the, the S15 taillights are cheaper, uh, their reproduction are- Oh, are they? Th than the That's S funny. The yeah, S14. the Zinke headlights are super expensive compared to Kuki ones, you're just like, ah. Yeah, and there's also three pieces. So there's also like a, like a practicality uh, component to mm -hmm. this whole thing. So, you know, if you, with one of our rear panels, you hit one side, you just replace one side, you don't have to replace the entire rear of the car. Okay, so fair enough. You know. So you're not gonna be doing that. So what do you think, to ignore my question then and go like further, <laughs> what is the product that you're gonna do for the next five years that's gonna make you guys super special? Is it just making new versions of stuff for different chassis? Is it making something that's like thought provoking, kind of like how the Super Doof was where you made a cheated yeah. low car and all that stuff? So like for example, right now, like our, our newest thing that's coming out, it's our Shogun kit for the C5 Corvette, mm -hmm. which is basically complete rebody of the C5 Corvette. The only thing that we're gonna keep is the doors and the hatch. Is that the 3D render that I reposted yes. on? That looks amazing. Thank you. It looks like you stole an RX-7 like FD thing so, and like made it cooler. Crazy thing, one of the guys has done Driftwick with you mm -hmm. who had that RX-7 front bumper on his. Oh yeah, yeah. Levi. Yeah. He messaged me like, dude, you guys need to make an RX-7 <laughs> front bumper for the, for the Corvette. And I was like, I, will, I love the idea because personally I love RX-7s. Yeah. FD is my favorite. Uh, of the RXs and one of my favorite cars. The thing is like, it would be too easy to straight up just put a, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, what, what is the design process? Where's the, the, the originality, you know? Mm -hmm. So for that reason, I wanted to make a kit that, I, imagine The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise, you know, wearing a samurai suit in Japan. You know, mm -hmm. you remember that movie? Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the idea. This is like an American car dressed up in samurai uh, uh, and samurai outfit. Mm -hmm. That's why we call the Shogun. The front bumper, it has like a, basically it's like a, the opening mouth of a samurai mask. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's kind of like the whole idea, like give that Japanese flavor to an American car. Mm -hmm. That if you think about it, I mean, that American car is also very close to the RX-7, you know, like, uh, uh, Americans and I mean uh, Europeans and and Japan, uh, Japan like they all being kind of like at some point taking cues, you know, like the the first Celica, it's an obvious you know um, uh, ver Japanese version of a Mustang, mm -hmm. right? But you know the the um, the old Datsuns, they're they're very clearly inspired in, in old Dodges, like to the point that uh, you know that Rocket Bunny Bosket. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people looks at it and it's like, oh, is that supposed to be a Challenger or a, a Cuda? Yeah, you well, can't it, tell. <laughs> but it, it's supposed to be a Datsun. But that Datsun that it's based on, it, it was inspired on American, on an American mm -hmm. car. So there's this back and forth, you know, like at some point America was the, the, the top of uh, automotive design in the world, right? And then, you know, like they, they came, the, the, here came the Germans, you know, BMWs and Mercedes and now, uh, Japan, for example, when they made the LS400 and all these other luxury cars, they're trying to emulate the Germans. Mm -hmm. And then Americans, they're trying to start emulating Japanese with, a, with a, a smaller cars and, you know, compacts and the style. So 
in, the entire world goes back and forth, you know, with like who's leading who. And I mean, look what BMW is doing now, right? Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't think nobody's going to follow that. Oh, God. <laughs> all the new BMW electric cars and all that stuff are so bad. <laughs> all the of them. Not, not, not just the electric, all of them. I, I personally I like really that. I like the simplicity of the Tesla front <laughs> bumpers and stuff because it's, it's form follows function kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And There's they no don't have a fake grill. Yeah. Like, it's so smooth and everything. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And There's I, very few companies that are doing, like, pure design. Yeah. And as a designer myself, I think we, we owe this, uh, we owe it to the public. We owe oh, it to my God. You could do Tesla bumpers on rear radiator cars because they don't even need anything. So smooth <laughs> them off and just delete all airflow. I mean, why not, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we, we can do everything as long as it serves a purpose. I'm, I'm you know, like as a designer, yeah. I'm always function and then form. Mm -hmm. And it has, it's, a, it's a thin balance between both. But I, I still think function has to be over, mm -hmm. uh, uh, over form. So, so in the next five years, you're going to do variants of cars such as that Shogun Corvette kit. That's instead what I want. of trying to like redesign the thought process of like raising a Formula D car and lowering the kit. I'm just kind of thinking of like always what the next five years holds. Yeah, and I think, I think that's what I want to do because uh, first of all, I graduated as a designer mm -hmm. and I never held a job as a designer after graduating, before I did, but so I always had, I, you know, I feel like a, like a frustrated automotive designer who never got a job at Ford or at Chevy, right? Mm -hmm. And Instead, I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to start my own company, start on my own design. So at this point, I feel like what I want is to design new alternatives for all these other chassis that are available out there. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, uh, a friend of mine is decided to start drifting a Lincoln Mark 8. Yeah. Which, you know, like that's kind of like the unexpected Mustang, right? Like, and I want that car to look a uh, little better. Now, I'll show you some, some renders of it. While we talk on the phone, I just wanted to pull yeah. up this Corvette. I was going to say, there's very few body kit companies or even like modern car companies mm -hmm. that simplify a design as much as you have with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you've really gotten rid of... Sorry, I completely got off on a tangent. No, that's fine. Like, that's the fine. C5 is a fairly simplistic car when you look at it. It's yeah. not... It's not fussy such as the C7 and the C8 are. Those are very they fussy cars. They look like cars. a Civic Type R. Yeah. I was going to say, you didn't fall for something like that with a body kit. You really embrace the simplicity with yeah. that. And I think that's one of the things, because how do I say this? Looking at that versus looking at your 2F kit for the 240s and stuff, yeah. I think you almost are becoming more simplistic in some of your designs. Yeah. Because this is somewhat fussy. A little bit. You know there, what I mean? There's definitely more elements than Yeah. You're trying to be standard. stylish by adding multiple curves and doing multiple things in different yeah. planes. Whereas um, you could almost like if you designed a body kit like that for an S14 or something like mm -hmm. that, where you simplified and deleted a lot of mm -hmm. the body lines and everything, that'd be really interesting. Well there, there's a, there's a few like for example like the the Rocket Bunny Sylvia mm -hmm. is very simple, very clean. You know, like it is, but I, there's something I don't like about that car. Well, I mean, I think because the fenders, I don't like the fenders, the, and the it ruins the whole dang car. Okay, I mean, and <laughs> like it, it's it, it, here's it's the, the thing riveted with, on like weirdo yeah. look. So that's the thing with the sign, you know, like you can't please everybody. Yeah. And there's there's tastes for. Well, I just meant it's not as simplistic as you yeah. would think because I was the thinking fenders the front get bumper. So much, yeah, the front bumper. The front bumper is very simple, simple very yeah. clean. And for example, like our fenders, mm -hmm. we make them without vents. Mm -hmm. I, I personally, I hate vents. Like yeah. they, they don't serve any purpose. Like, mm -hmm. let's be honest, you're not doing no, front wheel drive burnouts where you need all the smoke to come out of those vents, you know? And you're going sideways. You're not even like, oh, we need, we need to go so fast in a straight line. The car needs to be aerodynamic. You know, like, I personally think uh, I'm, 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 a, I'm a fall of a Bauhaus. Uh, mm -hmm. Less is more. Yeah. You know, I like that. That the simplicity of things, you know, things don't have to be complicated. Um, they, they, there, there's a beauty in simplicity. And if I start with a car that already is relatively simple, like the C5, is from the side, mm -hmm. where you see the front and it's extremely busy, it's basically just an afterthought of a C4. It, that's where it it, lo it lost me. It just breaks away from the simplicity of the rest of the car. But but the, it, it is there. So. 
I can work with something that already exists and make it slightly better. And um, I think there's a lot of cars out there that, I mean, just s 95 Mustangs, um, you know, the New Edge Mustangs, yeah. all those cars, they, it's crazy amounts of elements and stuff that they can be simplified and look uh, stylish and aggressive. Mm -hmm. but retain what it makes it look like a Mustang instead there of all the... There are very few cars that adhere to like Bau Bauhaus design principles and would allow you to do much with that yep. other than like a Model 3 or something like that, yeah. which is like literally the only thing, or old Jaguars, you know, like XKE mm -hmm. type stuff Just from way back in the day. Simplicity. Almost, and... even Ferraris now are fussy, fussy, fussy. Everything's Everything. fussy. Everything, like... You, I, you actually appreciate how simplistic the C4 is now that I'm looking at it yeah. behind me. I'm like, that is a very unfussy car that's very modern when you think about what it came from the C3. Yeah, they like, did a great that's job. That's impressive that the 80s did that. Yeah. And the C5 was very simplistic too. It, it was, but less. it brought a lot of elements from the C4 that were period correct mm -hmm. in the 80s and early 90s but not in the 2000s. I mean, yeah. the fact that they kept the pop-up headlights until 2005, that's old. You know, mm -hmm. like, I love pop-up headlights, but at, at 2005, pop-up headlights should have been long gone by then, yeah. you know? And um, so, you know, like, I don't think car companies are exempt of mistakes. Actually, I think they make a lot of mistakes. And a lot of them are because of, you know, like they have suits, you know, the car needs to be released this, this time, it doesn't matter, like, I don't care, just do this, you know. They don't really uh, care much about the final product, they care about the money. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally, for example, like, one of the biggest examples of this is the, the new Supra. Mm -hmm. It's a cool car, but it has nine fake vents. <laughs> that drives me nuts. Yeah. That is not acceptable on a Supra. Mm -hmm. I get it on a, on a Civic Type R, you know, it's meant to be hip, you know, like the kids, like, oh, it's my fast Civic. It just looks like, like, it looks aftermarket. Mm -hmm. Like, wh what do you do to a Type R? You know, like, are you going to change the bumper for another bumper that's just like fully, you mm -hmm. know, full of elements and just leave it as it is. It looks fine the way it is. But on a Supra, like, what's with all these fake vents everywhere? You know, like, what's with this, like, F1 looking nose? Like that design, that actually that nose came in like 2001's uh, Are you Celica. talking about the Supra or are you the, talking about the Integra? The, the Supra. This, okay. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, 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 the last By the Supra. way, I saw the FT86 prototype in Japan. Uh -huh. It looks so good. Yeah. For, and then like you look at the actual Supra and you're like, mm. dang. <laughs> like they had it. And then they obviously had to use a Z4 chassis to make the car buildable and everything else. I don't understand why. But, they could have used... Uh, Lexus, uh, like the, the, the coupe platform, you know, the, the because RCF. Because I think they had to go full BMW to get all the drivetrain and everything, like, sorted out, I think. I don't, I, I, see, here's the thing. To get an inline six and turbo and, like, everything I think they wanted, the BM, Toyota doesn't make an inline six. Toyota but, didn't make any of those You know, parts. like, Nissan move away from the inline six on, on, their, on their Datsun to switch from a V6, and the car just performed just as fine. Yeah. Like Lexus and, and Toyota, they have a, a, a good V6 platform that they could have used, and it could have been faster. Yeah. You know, like, I, I personally, I mean, I, obviously I think the whole BMW-Toyota alliance, it was more of a financial decision yeah. than, you know. I think it was also a checklist. They wanted an inline six turbo engine. They wanted all these things. Mm -hmm. They wanted rear wheel drive. They wanted two door. And they just had a checklist and they had to do that to be able to green light the program. And the what? program wouldn't have gotten green lit with a V6. Why not using the, the one series platform, which is, you know, like a two plus two instead of a, you know, like. If, I don't if, know. If that, I, 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 I'm, you know, same. Like I, if they, they had probably used couldn't the, have gotten the silhouette they wanted. I, mean, I don't they, know. Yeah, like me neither, but we're going to speculate for hours, obviously. And yeah. I love talking about these things. I just personally think that, again, like car manufacturers can make mistakes that, you know, like look at the new Z. Mm -hmm. Everybody's loving it. Everybody's like, it has a manual transmission, makes more power. It, it's simpler. It's so clean. It's, it's a beautiful car. There's a couple little things that could have been changed. I think the headlights still need to be reworked. That front grille is still kind of like, I want to see it in person to judge it better. But I'm pretty sure Toyota is kind of like, 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 you know, they're going to suffer because the Z is, personally, it's a better car. 
mm -hmm. and you know, and it looks simpler, looks better. It looks like a Nissan product. It is a Nissan product, and purists, as well as uh, new fans of the Z, are going to enjoy that car. Mm -hmm. and, and again, it's just simplicity, the cleanliness of the of the car that I think it's going to be a hit, as opposed to the Supras. I hope so. Crazy design. You know, the only generation of new. I like weird old stuff. I mean, I'm like you. I daily a Humvee. Like yeah. I, I have weird <laughs> stuff. But um, the only vehicle in the new generation lineup that I want that's Japanese mm -hmm. um, is probably the new FRS, whatever you call it, the new yeah, FRS, the GR86. It's, it's or, a, it's a it pretty is. car. It's but I was gonna say I, I like the simplicity mm -hmm. of it. I, like I've had tons of cars and like the new Z. I'm just like oh, I don't. The turbos, like that whole generation of Nissan chassis. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not super playful. Because I, I had a Nismo yeah, 370Z. Right? Yeah. yeah, I had a Nismo 370Z. You can't see out of them. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not a joyful car inside. Mm -hmm. it, it is very tough, though. Yeah. They're great battle tanks of cars. Yeah. But, like, if I, I don't know, I'm so jaded. I mean, I'd rather have a Corvette. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're similar. It's just that Corvettes have, like, that big rear glass where you can see it's like a bubble inside you can you cannot see outside of a 370z yeah. i had the nismo so as a back wing mm -hmm. you can see nothing past like right here yeah i mean because the doors up here the wing blocks the rear window those b pillar things if you go look at the side glass because of yeah. how it is you can only see like that much out of it the it's rear useless. strut bar it's in the way of the rear glass yeah you can't see anything yeah. you can just see out the front windshield and yeah. a little bit out the side windows um but at least that's how it's always been with the z that I, I yeah, own, I, I own so. like a three I had a three fifty Z, but it wasn't as bad. Mm. I had a brand new one too, okay. when, and I drove, and I mm. loved that thing. The three fifty was a much more joyful car to drive around. Okay. I guess when I buy a new Japanese car, mm -hmm. I want a joyful car to drive around because it's not going to be a pure drift car. Yeah. So I'm not worried and about performance. Not cheap. In the you same. want it to be. Yeah, yeah, Perfect. yeah. Whereas, like, with a 240SX, I'm like, I don't care. I'll V8 yeah. swap it. I'll put a body kit on it. I'll do this. I'll yeah. do that. I'm not willing to even put a body kit on a brand new car. You know, because I, I want to enjoy yeah. the body panels and all that stuff. Yeah. All right, skipping that, because we already talked about all that. Okay. Uh, and I don't want this to go forever. No, no. Because <laughs> you're going to have to go to bed, and I want to film care. one more episode. Um, <laughs> Tell me about what you're going to do in the future with body kit composition stuff. You have a choice of fiberglass, yeah. Kevlar, urethane, carbon fiber. Yeah. What else? Forged carbon, which the, no one will ever build anything Yeah, Yeah. <laughs> I'm they're, joking. No, I know, but there's like in, injection. <laughs> yeah. Um, injection molding. Urethane. There's, you know, um, the, there's, you know, like those five. Maybe there's one that we're missing. But for what we want to do, uh, which is American-made, mm -hmm. uh, affordable, and good quality, smooth, ready for paint. It's not warped, you know. Like the the, the surface is good, the quality is good, the the flexibility it's there. Yet you can uh, fix, mm -hmm. you know, the 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 material. Which there's other companies that offer these flexible materials that once they break can't really fix them. It just, you know, like you just zip ties Do you together. mean like KBD or? No, or but like, like for example, like, like the Duraflex offers, a, a, that's what they call the materials, like Duraflex. Oh, I have no experience with them. And um, it's, it's good for a street car, but when you break it, it's very hard to put back together. You can just like rest in and put more fiberglass. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't work the same way because of, of the composition of flexibility that they use. Where us, for example, we use straight resin with a, with a flexibility additive mm -hmm. and just regular fiberglass. So this can be fixed a hundred times if you want to. Mm -hmm. They're not that expensive to manufacture, which means we can manufacture them locally mm -hmm. and sell them at a competitive price. Because I think we, we all can agree that like eBay body kits, they all fit like trash. Mm -hmm. they, the surface is terrible. You can see through you know, the material. The, they warp. They don't fit good. Um, KBD, for example, I think it's a great product, it, but it's flexible. It's urethane, you know? But mm -hmm. that is, it seems to be like for a different application. There's drifters who love their KBD, you know, because they can like flex it and hit it. Mm -hmm. And 
And that's fine, you know. But KBD being uh, urethane requires injection, mm -hmm. and it's a more expensive process. Um, I don't know. I don't know where they make them. I don't, I don't know if they make them here or they make them overseas. But you know, good product. Mm -hmm. But it's for a different kind of uh, use, in my opinion. When you say different kind of use, why is that? Because uh, urethane, when it stretches, you can't, you can't, you can't just like like hit it back into. Mm -hmm. Like it takes a lot more work, mm -hmm. so it's harder to fix it. it. It's harder to break. I was gonna say they're like a million times harder to break. They're harder to break, but. Um, when it, when it gets damaged, mm -hmm. the same thing, you can't really fix it, you have to get another one. Okay. And one of the other things that uh, uh, KBD, for example, seems like it's, it works better with factory, you know, like the, the, the foam, the Oh the yeah, yeah, definitely. Because you it, definitely need structure behind it, it to keep the, that thing together. It holds the shape together. better, because you're, the, the nature of urethane, you know, you leave a factory bumper outside the sun by itself and it starts like, mm -hmm. like flexing. So, it's a material that it's made to flex. I mean, that's what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So when you hit a car at 30 miles per hour, just bruk, bruk, and you're good, right? Mm -hmm. um, is that how fiberglass is? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> our, our fiberglass has a level of, of flexibility. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like our, on our LFC panels, we make them extremely flexible. So, you know, you can, you know, it's a little forgiving depending mm -hmm. how hard you hit the wall. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you hit it hard enough where you destroy your fiberglass panels, the fiberglass is the last part you're being worried about. Mm -hmm. It's probably your fuel cell, the tubing, and you know, like you probably bounce off the wall. So, I, I think for for what we're trying to do and the and the kind of market that we're trying to 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 be, uh, fiberglass it's an affordable. Uh, uh, product that gives good quality, nice finish. Mm -hmm. uh, it flexes. It's light. It's uh, it's uh, cheaper to 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 ship, even because mm -hmm. the boxes are not that heavy, even though it's a big box. Um, and it holds its shape by itself. You know, you can just like literally mount it and barely have a bash bar, and your bumper is not wobbling. Yeah. You know, like so. I think I think we're just gonna keep making fiberglass. The only difference is that now we're 3D scanning and 3D uh, modeling and 3D printing uh, parts instead of oh. our old ways. You mean for the molds, you have like a little foam cutter and all that stuff? And yeah, we have. We, we, we're working on, on, a, on a new process right now that that basically involves 3D printing a prototype part, mm -hmm. and we work that part. We make it perfect, and after that, we make a mold out of that part, old school. Okay. So and you're not doing a foam cutting thing? No, no, no. Okay, old school. So it's, we, we're keeping it Very old school cool. when it comes to that aspect. And, but now we have a digital backup mm -hmm. of our product. So if for whatever reason our warehouse catches on fire and we don't have parts to make uh, new molds, we have the digital backup and we can just print That's a new mold cool. and rework it and, and you know, like make more, more fiberglass. And at the end of the day, fiberglass, it's, it's, it's a process that's been used and tested for ages, you know? Like, yeah. But uh, I see, like, say, carbon Kevlar kits and stuff. Yeah. To skip carbon fiber, because carbon fiber is probably just more expensive more fiberglass look. and yeah. also not any more durable or anything. Mm -hmm. The carbon Kevlar, though, I see guys in, like, James Dean. Yeah. They're smashing those kits. They fold them up, you know, like, yeah. and they pop back. Yeah. Is there a way to make a cost-effective kit for the competition guys? Because like 2F is already kind of a Formula mm -hmm. D kit, and I see, say, the Worth House guys. Yeah. They were bringing 20 body kits to the events. Yeah. Did you see that? Well, it was insane. And they they also had an insane budget. No, but I'm just saying they <laughs> so, could have just had one or two carbon Kevlar kits, and that have served them for the full mm -hmm. season. And you could have provided that type of stuff because the Formula D you're already kind of catering to the Formula D crowd and the people with a lot yeah. of. Um, competition type money. Could you have a carbon Kevlar product and would it be cost effective even if it was five, mm -hmm. seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen thousand dollars, somewhere in that range? Yeah. They would still, because your kits are how much? Twelve hundred? Uh, fourteen hundred. Fourteen yeah, hundred? So it's fourteen hundred bucks. So after three of these kits or four of those kits mm -hmm. or five of those kits, they could absolutely afford a carbon Kevlar kit that would last as long as four to five of those kits, wouldn't it? Yes, but at the same time, like when we look at we look at our records, uh -huh. and for example, one of our heavy, heavier heaters uh, was Alec Conado. Mm -hmm. Even though with his insane amounts of destruction that, that he did on our, on our body kits, it's still, um, 
more affordable, especially because we sponsoring him. Mm -hmm. It's it's our cost on materials and our cost on on stuff. Which even if, if we were making carbon Kevlar, that stuff's still super expensive. Mm -hmm. So our cost would be eight thousand dollars to give him one kit. Mm -hmm. Like I I'm, I have no problem what giving him. What would retail him, be? Do you think? Probably like. 10, 14, okay. something like that. And you don't like think that. that would be worthwhile for some of these pro teams? I don't, I don't think. Is that with fenders and everything or just the body um, kit? Maybe just the body kit, maybe fenders. I know, I know the, the M-Spec guys make you know, all the, the, the thing with fenders and rear fenders and like basically like a whole thing. I don't know how much they charge for it, but I know it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And I know when, when, when they gave a kit to James Dean, they're like, Ugh, you know, like <laughs> it, it took it took a dent on, on their wallet. Yeah. Um, so you know, because they're also made here. You Does know? production cost come down if you make more? We you have to have uh, multiple molds, you know, to have that that kind of uh, saving uh, cost in production because you can have one guy like preparing three molds and then letting them cure and then like you know where. When you only have one mold, you have to do one, wait until it cures, pull it out, do okay. the next one. So it, it adds up to the cost. I personally think the easiest way to cost cost cut, uh, cut costs would be doing it overseas. Mm -hmm. But that goes completely against like our core of what we are as a company. Mm -hmm. And I personally think like we, we've done a few. Like we actually made a kit. Uh, a complete kit on, on, on carbon Kevlar for Forest, and it was like a test. And from that test, we decided that it's, it's not worth it for us. Okay. It would be very expensive for our drivers, even, even if, if we sponsor them like partially, it still comes to so much money that they better buy three full kits. Okay. You know, so you've so, already gone through this process. Yeah, you we already, already tried it. Okay. And, Cool. And the and the other problem is that the the cost of the material is it fluctuates like crazy. Yeah. And it, it all comes from overseas, and obviously you know right now impossible to get everything. You know like even yeah. fiberglass is hard to get right now. So. So carbon Kevlar is going to be niche, and it's going to like you know not many companies are going to do that. You're not yeah. going to see eBay coming up with carbon Kevlar kits. I don't think so. Like I think I think the carbon Kevlar market is is perfectly being handled by HEK right now, mm -hmm. and uh, I think you know like M Spec, uh, they're doing their own version mm -hmm. of uh, of, uh, of a kit, and I, I think you know like I, I don't want to disrupt other people's markets either. You know like. I'm not trying to, oh, you know, like somebody else came up with this idea, let's make that and mm -hmm. try to like, you know, like I, I'd rather uh, go into like uh, where nobody has gone. So nobody made rear uh, replacements, mm -hmm. that's where I'm going because I have no competition. Okay. If, if anybody else wants to eventually do the same and compete with us, it is what it is, you know, like yeah. we, we welcome competitors, um, you know, like actually I like going back and forth with the signers of other kids and like give, her, give them feedback and you know, like they usually, uh, there's a good back and forth, you know, with other designers. But, um, but you know, we, we rather just like be, uh, to, we rather innovate mm -hmm. and just do things that nobody else is doing. Have you ever had people buy your kits and make molds and knock you off? Um, or it doesn't really happen that much? N I, not that I know. Okay. And I think, and I think we're we've been, we're lucky because mm -hmm. everybody could. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, there's a few orders uh, that uh, we've got from overseas that we're kind of like, well, we're not sure if we're actually <laughs> selling it over there until we actually have a distributor mm -hmm. over there, um, because you never know. Mm -hmm. And you know, like you've seen how many replicas of Rocket Bunny there is, and how many replicas of basically everything, right? So I'm pretty sure Rocket Bunny is not happy about it. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't like, I would yeah. like to see my parts being copied. I know it's kind of like, like um, you know, there, uh, there's a uh, imitation is uh, the best way of flattering. Yeah. But when imitation also becomes business-wise, it's not that nice, you know. Mm -hmm. So. I hope, I hope not. I mean, I think 
by keeping our prices relatively affordable, even though we're on the higher end. Mm -hmm. um, the the end uh, the it is a customer that realizes that it's the quality and the finish and the fitment because that's the thing. Like our our stuff fits perfect to factory sheet metal. Mm -hmm. So if something doesn't fit a customer. It's their fenders that's wrong. Well, I was going to say, unfortunately, no 240s are straight anymore. <laughs> well, they can use our parts to straighten up their cars, you know? Like, uh, uh, we, we take Frame pride. Frame specs there. Yeah. We take pride on, on, on we, we spend a lot of time before mm -hmm. making a mold, making sure that everything fits perfect. We get f uh, metal sheet, uh, sheet metal fenders and super straight cars to mm -hmm. mold our stuff on. So, that way, I mean, now with the 3D scanning technology we're using with a C5 Corvette, it's guaranteed fitment, you know, like. As long as that car's straight. I mean, <laughs> but, you know. I, I, Did I, you go sit there and like, you know, check all the body gaps and make the car perfect before um, you scanned it? Kinda, like the thing with the Corvette is that it's a Corvette. They, <laughs> they come with bad uh, they gaps come, yeah, from bad. factory, mm -hmm. right? So we have that forgiveness. That was, a, that was a, the funny thing, like the, the, our very first product, that first uh, C5 bumper we made, we had a lot of customers like, hey, this part looks like it fits terrible against the fender. And then I was like, well, look how your, your original bumper used to fit, and it fit just like that. Mm -hmm. So like, in our mistake, we emulated a, a fault on the original Corvette yeah. bumper. So like, people thought it was our bumper that fit bad. But then we may, I show people like, no, this is what a factory Corvette fits, fits like, and they're like, oh, it's just <laughs> worse. <laughs> so, now our second version of that bumper actually fits better mm -hmm. than the factory. But with, with, the, with this new kit, yeah, we're going to make sure that everything fits uh, right, that, that everything has adjust, uh, enough adjustability mm -hmm. where you can make it fit good. But at the end of the day, I feel like uh, particularly on the, on the, for the drifters, they don't care that much because of all the livery and the crashing and all that. But in reality, our, our largest consumers are street cars. So, and I know they wonder. Really? Yeah. Oh, like okay. most I guess of that our, makes sense. But. Most of our Super Duff kits are bought for people who want to style and stand on the streets and yeah. like street shark, you know, like, um, so, you know, like, uh, we want to make sure that our stuff meets their criteria and their quality expectations. Mm -hmm. but at the same time fits the drifting community. Do you communicate clearly to the streetcar people um, the like, ethos of how your kit is built and that their car will have to be kind of high, you know what I mean, suspension-wise and tire-wise and all these things to fit this? Or do they ever buy the kit and they're putting it on 17s and stuff and they're like, oh, crap, what have I done kind of thing? We actually kind of have that issue with the E46 kit. Mm -hmm. Like the first people who bought the car, they, they already had a lowered... E46, mm -hmm. they, put their car, they put the key in the car and it, it is on the ground. Like they literally can't drive it. Mm -hmm. So they actually have to raise their car. But in their eyes, the car still looks low. Mm -hmm. So they're okay with it. Mm -hmm. There's just a few people who, they, they like, like talking wheel, you know, like yeah. but they can't talk wheel anymore. But I think it's one thing, you know, one, one thing in trade for another. Um, but so far, I mean, I, I think everybody likes the fact that there's just, they, you know, their car is not going to ride like this because they're maxed out at, the, yeah. at lowering it. They actually ride nicer and still looks nice and stylish. How about, to wrap this up now, yeah. do you have any pet peeves? Like, say your side skirts mm -hmm. are like wings at the back, if mm -hmm. you know what I mean. They stick out far. Yeah. Do you have customers that just have like weak ass wheels <laughs> and you know, like they're this far from the side skirt and they're hovercrafting and you look at pictures and you're like, delete that picture now. <laughs> Get that off the internet. Like, like I, how do you deal with that kind of stuff? Cause we, you have to see that a lot. We've been, well, we've been fortunate enough that the people who buy our stuff because it's a high, higher price mm -hmm. uh, product most of the most of our buyers are aware of fitment and are aware of of wheels and okay so it's kind of one of those things you know like you remember the blister boys like bn blister back in the day when it hit ebay uh -huh. and people were buying you know what bn blister is no like that car is weak looking because <laughs> of the see that the, the fender fitment. the fitment and everything yeah. but you know what i'm saying like that that makes your product look bad compared yeah. to the factory because like bn's cool yeah type four was like the jam when we were young yeah do you agree um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it was so cool. Yeah. And for someone to like make a knockoff eBay version 
like car of your kind of thing. Like, yeah. it just like it's depressing. Yeah, like. It, it, but I guess you don't have that much. I, I I have rarely seen like somebody like doing something weak, and like we just simply don't reshare it mm -hmm. on our social okay. media. So you but, hope it just like fades away. Yeah, like we don't really go. Like I, every now and then, for example, like one of the things that. Uh, a lot of people do is like they don't put the turn signal. Oh God, my car doesn't have turn signals right now. And and I just tell people like, hey, you know, like just cut that little tab. Yeah. It's gonna look so clean if you just get rid of that little little tab. And they're like, oh, cool, cool. Yeah. And they cut it. And now the car looks a, a lot cleaner, a lot nicer. Mm -hmm. But like that's kind of like a little pet peeve when somebody like never do, never put the the turn signals. It just looks like there's something missing there, and they don't see it. I so, don't have the turn signals in mind. <laughs> but but you know but, but you're drifting it? Yeah. So, you know, like at least it's not like you're at like At least it's not a street car. Yeah, exactly. And and you know, like now you know, like next time you see it, just go with it with a handsaw and cut it and you're gonna be like, oh, it looks so much better. But it's also not a, a, a deal breaker for me. I, I don't I don't make a post on online like ah I can stand it when people do this, you know, like mm -hmm. Uh, well, they are your customers. You don't want to alienate them. Exactly. Um, but, you know, like a little bit of education slash opinion. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, you know, if you, if you get this, like, you know, like a 30 mil spacer, your wheel's going to look so much better. With, oh, okay, cool. You know, and if they don't do anything, like, well, well, okay, that's it. You know, like, I'm not going to go out of my way to obliterate, you know, like. Yeah. But, you, like, take the 16s off your car. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, again, also because the individuality and originality that like like you know like I'm, I don't like the crazy camber stuff mm -hmm. but if that's what people wants to do and that's what they decide to do like okay I mean I personally don't like it might not share it if it's like too stupid mm -hmm. but I think like there's a certain level of camber that looks cool and I can appreciate the effort you know into making things mm -hmm. look good and the the time it takes to fit stuff and get the right everything you know so that that we're totally okay with that but yeah like i said like rarely get a a customer that doesn't understand what they're buying because it's a little bit more of a premium product mm -hmm. than than you know like a 400 600 dollar yeah. ebay kit are you ever going to work backwards and make a more tame kit that doesn't hang so low so that someone could have you know a different style of street car so like, because I do think that most mm. street cars nowadays do want to tuck tire if they're like the certain type of crowd and everything, um, and they might mm. gravitate more towards your kit if you offered them something that wasn't as low. Because like a lot of the mm. guys are moving back to like stock body Type X kits yeah. and things like that. Would you do anything else that's a much more streetable style, or you just want to stick with the full Formula D cheater low? Maybe maybe if there's the demand for it. Mm -hmm. Like I say, like. Uh, if you look at the, the street cars like mm -hmm. that that we like that have our kit, they look on point, like fit yeah. and everything, like you know, nice okay. wheels. Like the 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 cheater low uh, actually worked pretty good for street cars. Yeah. Because they, they still like I said they ride less bouncy, you know, and they actually can get a little bit of geometry on their car and they still look good. And uh, I think that's also one of the things that our customers are realizing yeah. when they get they get in the kit and they raise the car, they're like, huh. I, my car doesn't run like shit. So the answer is no. I don't think so, unless <laughs> unless there's like a like a big demand, like you know, somebody yeah. needs to make this. Like, okay, well, if nobody else is making it, okay, we might consider it. Fair enough. Is there any? As all right, last question. What's your favorite body kit by another manufacturer? S chassis, so we don't get too in the weeds or something. Ah. Uh. Like, where do you derive your style from? Or like not derived style but maybe like your muse for like when you go look at something you're like ooh they killed yeah. it that's good i mean i really think bn it's it's always going to be one of those classics yeah you know like can't go wrong you do share like the design of the ethos with the bell bottom the, the, kit the, at the exactly. bottom exactly and okay. and uh and uh like type four you mean uh or type three i'm not too familiar with like the the, the particular names okay. so the mo yeah. models but i i know like bn like the first thing that comes to my mind is the, the bn rx7 like that is like a like ooh, the quintessential know, like, bell bottom kit. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I really like that style. Like that, the, you know, like it just flares out and it kind of like sucks to the ground. Like that, that, that that's what the whole idea of ground effects mm -hmm. came right. Like it's supposed to be on the ground, mm -hmm. um, which I believe they the original designers for BN they got all that from from real racing. Mm -hmm. You know from 
the 80s, you know, like uh, an F1 experimenting with ground effects. That's where the actual term comes from. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, like I, I, I really like um, the extreme uh, radical change that Rocket Bunny do, uh, do with their boss kits, mm -hmm. like the RX-7 boss kit with like, you know, like the old school uh, retro look and the same with the S14. Um, but style-wise, yeah, I think BN is, is kind of cool. like what I like the best. All right. That's a pretty easy one to love. Because it was era so specific. Good when we got into drifting, because yeah. like some of the new kids that get into drifting, they're like, what's that? You know, like they just have no idea. It yeah. didn't hit them at the correct time. Like a person that's just getting into video games has no nostalgia for like Mario or Zelda or like any of those yeah, things. Like they're like mean. Call of Duty kids, you know, like completely different thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was gonna I say. That's a way of putting it, yeah. 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 I don't even know what new kids would like with body kits. Like what's the new well, thing? But that's, that's the thing, like new cars, they're already so tricked out. Yeah. You know, like, do, do you see that Camry recently? Like, like the... Just like a TRD, like, 2021 or something? Yeah, like... Yeah. They're, has, like, they have a lot of, <laughs> lot of design fluff. Yeah, there's so much... Like, what do you do to it? Have you noticed, <laughs> if you go look at them, they have four exhaust tips and only two have holes only in them? Only two have holes, yeah. you're yeah. like, uh... <laughs> you're like, everything is so designy on these cars. And, and fake vents everywhere, and, like, yeah, yeah, they look cool, but, you know, like, what, what, what I would do is actually make those vents functional. I would just but. delete everything and like have a Model 3, basically. <laughs> Not to come back to that constantly, but I think it's one of the few cars that has no fluff on it, or very little fluff. Yeah, like, there's, I, the simplicity of the electric car, I'm, I'm all for electric, by the way. I'm, I'm, oh, like, I'm not even, a, I don't even care about this all that. This is a solar-powered mean... uh, building. Really? Yeah, like oh, the, cool. we don't even have a, a line outside. Oh, and wow. I, and I daily drive on electric. Yeah, fiat. I noticed your uh, inverter box or whatever that is over there. Control, yeah. What is it? An inverter or a control That's box? A, or? Both. Uh, it's an yeah, inverter, I controller. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to we have, have to. Sh where's your battery pack? Uh, right now, we're, we're, we're just running those uh, oh, God. RV batteries. That's hilarious. Because our, our, our actual battery is still in back order. Okay. But that will dust it for now. Cool. Um, but. Um, I, I, I agree. I, I think uh, the simplicity of the electric uh, drivetrain yeah. adds to the simplicity of the design because there's less requirement for, for grills. And yeah. my, my Fiat, is, it's an electric Fiat, it doesn't have... Oh, like, you have a little E500? Yeah, a little driver? 500E, yeah. I love that thing. It's a it's, it's fun little yeah. daily driver. And it looks cleaner, in my opinion, than, mm -hmm. than the Abarth and the regular mm -hmm. one. Um, yeah, cars are too fussy now. It, it, it's too much going on, in my opinion. Like, I think we need to go back to the simplicity, the cleanliness, and... Says the guy that makes bell-bottom kits. <laughs> <laughs> but it's simple at the end of the day. Like, you know, like, yeah, I'm just laughing. I know, but, yeah. but, 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 but I, I know what you mean. Like, um, if you look, for example, like 20 years ago with the Fast and Furious era, mm -hmm. the Bomex, oh, God. and uh, you know, the, all these uh, crazy... You know, five, six, seven different intakes on the bumper. I won a Bomex kit and just like never collected it <laughs> at a drift event. Oh, there you? I was like, yeah, a Falcon Drift show off. It was okay. one of the prizes. I was like, I don't want that. <laughs> like, no. I mean, not even for for. Uh, uh, not even as a joke. <laughs> or, no. or like you know, uh, memory value. <laughs> like, no. But uh, I didn't want it. So you know, like, what I like about our style is like there's three elements: mm -hmm. one grill, two sides. And that's kind of how we want to keep it. That's how we're doing it on the Corvette. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm doing it on my, on my C3. Mm -hmm. Just simple everything, uh, look-wise. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can add livery and then just go the other way. Yeah. But that's just the paint, you know, on top of the, of the shape. So Cool. Well, thank you so much, man. Oh, boom. Thanks for coming, Thank man. you, audience. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I think that's it. Perfect.